Hi, and welcome to this podcast with me, Geeta Joshi. I'm here today with Remy Roth. Welcome, Remy. Thank you very much. It's lovely to be in your studio here. It's so quiet. It's a Sunday. It's, it's beautiful, <laughs> but it's such a nice space, so much light and everything. Yeah, I'm very um, lucky. Yeah. So um, I know your work mostly from the street art that you've done, like, yeah. or murals. Actually, no, probably going back before that was uh, Daily Goods. That was oh, a really okay. great... Um, That's right. Sort of, do you call that a show? Because you'd yeah. actually done it on here. So Carter, who mm. has since sold Daily Goods, he has. He and I just became friends just from going in, and it's quite, it's all quite serendipitous actually. We'd moved out of our house in Peckham to have renovations done, and we'd moved to Camberwell, so we had this like little Camberwell life for about six months. Which I mean, it doesn't sound like it's actually that far away, but they're quite different areas. Mm-hmm. And my wife was quite sick at the time and she'd had a big operation and she had a hysterectomy and she was recovering and she was you know quite fragile and so we would do these gentle walks down to daily goods and we just got to know Carter and you know chatting and and he said I'd love to get you in here but you're totally out of my league and I I was so upset by that I was like what are you talking about let's do it I'm let's do it you know we'll do a little mural I'll do like six or seven pieces and we'll We'll put it out. We'll that was, it. That's so funny because even when um, I saw it, and you know, I, I don't know if you know it, but I did some work with Campbell Arts. So I've I been did. With, I yeah. do know that. Yeah. So I've, you know, been working with them for a few years. At the moment, I just do their open studios program. But when we saw that, uh, you know, you'd done this sort of takeover of the space because you'd actually painted on the walls as yeah. well. It wasn't just framed artworks. We were like, wow, it's got Remy Ruff in there. Yeah, it's so funny. it's uh, well, you know, that's more where, of a celebrity than you think, perhaps. But that's where people start. You know, when you start. As an artist, you know, you do shows in cafes. I mean, I did. For you know? sure, yeah. So I thought there was something nice about coming full circle and doing that. Mm. And, you know, not being arrogant about it. It's like nice to share what you do with people who love it and people who don't know it and, yeah. and in areas that you live, I think. And I, I, I never do anything in my own area. Oh, okay. Which is, you know quite weird because I'm always I mean I to be honest I do I really do stuff in London you know London is not my market you know I'm always traveling so my, I'd say 90% of my work's abroad so do I mean has that changed a bit in the last couple of years obviously you had daily goods you've done the commission kind down at Peckham I mean I'd say not even a couple of years I'd say probably in the last sort of six months you know I've had mm. people approach me and I've had small things I've had a couple of things in group shows in uh, galleries like Stolen Space. Um, I used to work with Screen Gallery, do you know Screen? Yeah. Um, but when they closed down, that was kind of my London gallery gone. And I didn't, I didn't really feel the necessity to fill that gap. It wasn't like, I was like, oh my God, I've got to fill the London gap. You know, sure. there was so much going on. I just got on with what I had to get on with. Now I'm kind of a little bit, oh, yeah, it could be quite nice to have a London gallery. But you still do other commissions in London. I do, I do. Nowhere near as many as I do abroad, though. I mean, it, it literally is quite a small percentage. How do you find your funny. gigs abroad, then? Are you invited by approached. people, or is it your galleries are no, as agents? No, to... some of the galleries. So there's a gallery, two galleries I work with uh, in Europe, one in Paris called Magda Dunnis Gallery. And she's a really interesting woman. She's amazing. She um, used to work for one of the big classic Paris galleries. I can't remember the name of it for life for me. But she told her boss, you know, I think she was like 17 or something, said, I'm going to open my own gallery. And he laughed at her like, you silly little girl. Mm. And, you know, she now owns a gallery in Paris, a gallery in Shanghai. Um, She had a a pop-up gallery in London for nearly 18 months. You know, she's planning another one. You know, yeah. she's amazing. She does museum shows. She took me out to Singapore for a museum show in January. Amazing. So she she puts a lot of work and projects my way. The gallery I work with in Germany in Zabrucken are called Zimmerling and Jungfleisch, and they're really good. They put a lot of stuff. So where way. was that? Zabrucken. Oh, okay. So it's kind of south uh, southwest, quite near the French border, quite near Strasbourg, and they sell a lot of works to German and French collectors because they're near the border. But they also hook up quite a lot of commissions. They have a huge mural um, program that they're doing as well. So they're pretty cool. But then I'm yeah. guessing you're getting invited directly by yeah, I mean, it's, uh, all people manner of commissioning things. work. Yeah. All manner of things. I'm up next month I'm 
going to San Diego to paint a mural at a music festival, which should be fun. And then I fly directly from there to Halifax, Nova Scotia, to do kind of a weirdly non-art-related project for the Canadian Tourist Board. Do you get to take your family when you travel? Sometimes, this not always. My, my wife is a very busy businesswoman as well, so it's kind of, yeah, it's quite hard. And my daughter's 14 and has like a million things going on, so... Sometimes. I did a really nice project for Art Basel in Hong Kong oh, at the beginning wow. of this year. Yeah. Um, what was that? So I was commissioned by the MTR, who are like the tube in um, Hong Kong, um, a company called Swire, who own loads of buildings and Cafe Pacific and massive developers, and an architectural firm called IDAS. And the three of them had sort of collaborated to bring me over and design an installation to go in one of the stations. So it's like a 180 metre long installation, like tunnel, both walls. Sort of side. A tunnel yeah. if you go through into yeah. the tube or something yeah. like that. So it's sort of like a walk through tunnel. So, I mean, obviously they sound huge. Did you, have you always done like really large scale work or did, um, did that sort of, did you move up from like two metre paintings to no, I mean, I started. I started as a graffiti artist. So, so I would paint walls all day long, you know. Uh -huh. it's uh -huh. No big deal to me, you know, even at age 16, I was painting, you know, 20 foot long walls. Right. And then you just scale up, you just start scaling yeah. up and scaling up and then suddenly they're like 10 stories and you just deal with it and you just, you know, there's always that moment of looking at it and going, oh my God, how are we going to do that? And then you just start and you just get on with it and then before you know it, it's finished and you go to the pub. <laughs> So what about then the smaller pieces? Because we're sitting in your studio and there's like a you know, two metre painting on the wall next to us. So yeah, so weirdly, they sort of, take even longer. <laughs> but did that sort of work follow or did, were you also doing smaller things um, in your early days? I was doing smaller things. I, I, I think I kind of like the idea that artwork should be quite sizable. Mm -hmm. um, I do smaller works. I rarely sell them via galleries. I, you know, either... People come to the studio or I put very small paper pieces on my website sometimes. Mm -hmm. All the larger works pretty much go out to galleries. Um, a couple of these are going to be shown in London in October at the House of St. Barnabas. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's yeah, a great place. Yeah, I've I'm, learned work there. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm doing that with a, an artist called Peter Lamb, uh -huh. who um, actually works sometimes with uh, Ian Davenport. And uh, another artist called Charlie Peters, who is amazing. And she is um, one of the heads of courses at UAL. Okay. So, so yeah, the three of us doing a little three-person show. Because it's quite a, a nice sort of conversation between all the work we do. So mine is very graphic, very geometric, very clean. Whereas Charlie Peters has a, a very geometric and very clean sort of aptitude to her work but also has a kind of coarse intervention into it with very loose gestural bits uh -huh. and kind of she uses like kind of spray can motifs kind of trails sometimes it'd hmm. be hard to, hard really hard to describe but there's a looseness to them even within the kind of regimented ge geometry of them and then Pete's work is kind of a lot more textural and loose but he contains them in really amazing frames and shapes. So they kind of had this really interesting sort of triangular conversation. Yeah. Oh, I'll so, have to go to that then. So that's yeah. uh, in October, did you yeah, say? Yeah, October okay. 17th, I think. Yeah. And we're going to produce a little catalogue for it, which uh, Charlie Peters has written an essay um, with us all helping as well. Pete's been quite involved in that. So yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. So that's your next London show because, like you said, you don't really have many. London that is the next sort of... London show. That's the first London show I've done since two thousand fifteen. Wow. Which was um, with Screen, which was the first London show I'd done since two thousand nine. So yeah, I don't really do. I mean, the little no. groups. You know, I've been in a group show or two, but solo shows or big shows. That's kind of. And it. does your work get taken to first by the? Other galleries um, that you mentioned. Yes, I've had I've had a couple of stuff go to fairs. Um, we had uh, work in Paris recently at the Paris Art Fair mm -hmm. with Spearstra Gallery, who is the gallery I work with in Switzerland. A couple of others I can't think of at the moment, but yeah, it, it does 
it's always getting shot out to places and some comes back, some doesn't. Kind of depends. So what do, what do you spend your time on more in terms? So would that be the um, commissions? Uh, it's kind of, I think it's a very even three-way split between painting commissions, painting in the studio, mm -hmm. and designing the commissions and kind of doing the kind of the day-to-day, -day, I guess, admin of designing artwork for whatever it needs to be. So a lot of the kind of commissions have to be, so it sounds quite trite, but they have to kind of be designed. Yeah. And it's not that they're, what's the word? They're not facades, you know, they're hand painted. A lot of them are hand painted murals. Some aren't. I've, I've just done two commissions that are actually stickers. They were designed oh, completely graphically vinyl? designed. Yeah. The one I did in Hong Kong was all vinyl, 3M vinyl. And I just did the stairs at Wembley, Yeah. which is all vinyl as well. And Why is like that a, then? Is that just because that's the um, material suited to that? It's suited, well, it's, it's very hard wearing mm -hmm. and it's removable when, if and when they want to remove it. Okay. Um, it's also repairable. With the one in Hong Kong, it's permanent. But if something happens to one of the panels, just take it off, print a new one, put it back on. I see. Um, it's not going to fade because it's underground, so there's no sunlight on it. And so, yeah, so it's, easy, it's easily fixed. Um, but yeah, so there's kind of three sort of working situations that I kind of turn around constantly. Keep you busy all the time. Yeah. So talk to me about the uh, repairs, because I know you were on a jaunt that you had to yeah, go into so town to repair some work. So very occasionally, somebody, you know, drags a ladder across a wall in a building <laughs> and something like that, and I get called up to come and fix it. So today's job was um, a commission I did for a company called Open Text. Um, and it's their, their boardroom, their meeting room. And it's kind of like an immersive space and they kind of glassed it off. So it's a literally a singular space that you kind of shut the door and you're completely mm -hmm. cased in. Um, and there was just this one bit that was damaged that I had to, to repair. It literally took me 10 minutes, but to actually it's physically do it. It's part of the contract, <laughs> I guess, at the beginning, yeah. right? It's like Yeah, so yeah, it just depends. I mean, most things... Like even the murals, I kind of like them to just deteriorate. That's kind of part of their life. Yeah. Um, to fade and deteriorate, the colours change over time, and I love that. I, I love the, you know, well, going when back they're to weathered and things outdoors. Yeah, I, I did one in. I did a, a water tower. No, it wasn't. A water, it was sorry, an electrical tower, like an old, really tatty electrical tower in um, in Santander in Spain in the countryside. And it's just this concrete monolith with a little roof yeah and then above the roof all the wires and so they all kind of connect to wherever they need to go and I did this thing during uh, an exhibition that I had running in um, Santander and somebody sent me a picture of it recently and it was so faded like it, it was a really strong golden yellow the, the bulk of it and it faded to almost like a, a vanilla Oh. And it looked great. I was like, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, I was really happy with it. I was like, that's fine. It's still there, you know. That's, that's yeah. the cool thing. And what about your style? How has that evolved over the years? Because you've got kind of quite a recognisable graphic style. Um, hmm. Or has it so, not? Maybe, did you always work in that? Well, no. I, so, I mean, when I started making art, I was painting very classic graffiti art. So, you know, like letters. I was painting letters. And... Um, it was very typographic, but there was a lot of kind of space and in between negative and kind of positive spaces within those letters. And, you know, when you do something for 25 years, you kind of just begin to get bored of it and you kind of want to go elsewhere. And yeah. I was, to be honest, I was never truly comfortable within that world. I was always wanting to break out of it and do abstract things. And I do that. Ah. The thing is, for all its intensive rebellion and subversiveness it's actually really conformist it's yeah. it's one of the most horribly conformist subcultures you can be involved in and and if you do anything which is considered not part of the the better part of the culture mm. you, you you get blasted so i was always a little bit kind of wanting to break out of it but then part of me was like oh i better not because you know 
you're in it and you have to you have to conform. And did you have a name for yourself in that? Well, the, the, the name was well, just Rough, that yeah. was it. And then just, you know, friends of, two friends of mine actually always used to call me Remy Rough. So it just <laughs> kind of became my name. Um, but yeah, so I guess what happened with the letters is they started fragmenting and I would take elements of those letters and I would take um, the sort of colour codes from those letters and I would bring them into a more contemporary space and I would just fracture them and just pull them apart, simplify bits. And at the time I was looking at a lot of art by Ben Nicholson, Mondrian, you know, very mm -hmm. regimented kind of ge geometric, uh, geometric art, um, which really piqued my interest. I was like, like literally blown away by everything I picked up and was looking at. And I, I'm not educated in art, I've never been to art school. Okay. Um, so you were kind of seeing it with fresh, mature eyes. Yeah, in a way, yeah. Like, no, yeah. no one's told me how to do things. Mm. I've just done them. So, um, which you know, there's, I guess there's pros and cons of that, and it's, it is what it is. And I don't regret not going to art school, but I just do what I do, and I, I still manage to research, and I still manage to educate my mind and my my sort of visual fodder, if yeah. you will, and. Um, yeah, I was looking at so many things and it just all started informing the direction that I wanted to go in. And I, I very much wanted to create something that was original, which I know is very, very hard in this day and age. I wanted it to be mine. I have a very strong belief that you should own things. Mm -hmm. And in a world where people, you know, on social media will do something that looks exactly like your oh work God, and then... Yeah right, inspired by next to it, if you're lucky. I just feel you need to own things. So I work very hard to make sure that what I do is mine. Even though I'm influenced by all these different things, they're not necessarily, the ideas of what I've learned aren't going into the artwork, it's more the kind of overarching aesthetics that are going into the artwork. Yeah, so as in, but the output is like purely your own visual I, language. I is, really is that the thing? Because that's, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Because that's the thing that we each have that is yeah. unique, isn't it? When you sort of talk to artists or, you know, you're given a brief. Yeah. And then, you know, 10 artists will produce 12 different things, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. of, totally. You know, that, you, uh, yeah, visual language being their unique voice, I guess, or output. I mean, I think that's the strongest thing that <clears throat> I'm able to put into the work is that I, I know when to stop, which I think is a very important lesson in making art, because some people never do. I mean, I know brilliant artists, friends of mine, um, especially in the world of graffiti, they, they, they would just start something and it would get to a point now, oh my God, that's amazing. And you know that they're going to get that tipping point is going <laughs> to come and then it's going to start going down into complete like chaos. And it's, it always really bugged me because I thought you just have to know when to stop. So I, I really, I'm quite good it's at quite, just knowing when to. It's quite controlled as well. No. I mean, like looking at some of these on the wall, you know, it's, it's they seem very yeah controlled, like on that pink where it fades and things. Yeah, I really like that. Do you, um, how much of that, like a, a panel like that, would be? Um, created on paper or whatever beforehand or um, in how much that I actually did a study so I do a lot of studies on paper mm -hmm. um, just to kind of get the forms right and to get the dynamics right because you know with these kind of shapes and forms you can very easily get them wrong they can look they have to sit in a certain way and they have to have a certain heaviness and a, a certain weight yeah um and also a certain imbalance. It's, I think it's very important to have a, a balance and an imbalance. I mean, I'm always, you know, really obsessed with the kind of the, the negative space as well. Because, you know, there's a lot of the, the surface is a, a lot of that is uncovered and, and not yeah. painted. And, and that's quite an important aspect of that painting. And do they always stay? Um, so do you... I mean, will you paint the where the wood area, the you know the obvious negative spaces? No, that's all. They will that's stay. a finished painting. That's a finished painting. That's, all, all these four are completely finished. Um, 
That hasn't been varnished. That's the only thing that hasn't had. These three are all varnished and done. Um, I love that, actually. Yeah, just, you know, like really playing with the materiality because things like some of that orange and pink has such an artificiality yeah. about it and then you've got the flatness of it. Yeah, but you also have an organic sort the, of edge as well yeah. because it's wood grain. Mm. And, you know, within my world growing up, it was all about surface. You know, you were forever painting steel trains or concrete walls. Or, <laughs> so, you know, these surfaces yeah. were constantly informing what you do and how the paint reacted on them, which was always different. Oh, you know? of course, You yeah. paint on steel, it was very different to how... You know, it mm -hmm. would react when you paint on a concrete wall that has, you know, like 150 layers of spray paint. You know, like I've been to... And flaking and all yeah, that. Yeah, I've been to some of these kind of walls and literally you can peel off and there's like that much. And you can see all the kind of layers wow. of paint that have been there through the decades. So, you know, surface is a really important thing to me. Mm. And it's taken me quite a while to get to a place where I'm very comfortable with surface. Um... I still paint canvas, but even with that, I like to paint like raw herringbone linen. So it's the oh, surface is still you're seeing the grain through yeah, it. Yeah, it's and really strong, yeah. and 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 there's this balance between the really tight geometry of the paint and the kind of looseness and organic feel of the material that is on there, which I love. I love that. I don't want to say do juxtaposition, your, but yeah, that. Your canvases, you're also using spray paint, or is that mixture? More they're all a mixture of acrylic, graphite, and spray paint. So they. And that's true of the paperwork as well. The paperwork is just graphite and spray paint. Okay. So, and your paperwork, are so you only selling those directly? Um, only the small ones. Only yeah. The tiny, tiny ones. Um, just because it's. It's a no, small thing. Food and galleries, they're just like a little personal thing that I put on my website. Oh, nice. Well, but I know that they've had a lot of attention, you know, when I've spoken to people. They say, oh, did you see the thing? Remy's little, um, well, we thought they were prints, actually, but, you know, they're yeah, actually no, they're originals, aren't originals, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, we've sold all of those now. They're all gone. Um, but, yeah, it's, I think it's nice to have those organic surfaces, you know, in the paper as well. The paper I use is um, handmade, so it still has that kind of deckled edge oh. and... I'll, I'll pull a couple of out and show you in a sec. So where are your favourite places to see artwork? Oh, hmm, it's interesting. So do you get time when you're travelling to I, go and see whatever? You know, I do whether try. It's public spaces or galleries or... I do try. I love the Met in New York. Mm -hmm. That's an amazing place. Um, MoMA in San Francisco, amazing. I love, um, I love Tate Modern. I love going to Tate Modern. I try and go there at least once every few months, just to go and even just to walk around. Yeah. Um, I think the new, the Pyramid Tate is amazing. I don't think they've had a show strong enough to hold its own within that space yet. And what about um, another commission for you then? What would you be looking for? What would be an ideal kind of thing? Because obviously you've done like big public spaces and things like that. Ooh, I don't know. I mean, I, I love I love being interactive with spaces. I love to to do things within space and to change space. Um, Have you done floors as well, or did I? Uh, I maybe not you. I haven't. I haven't done f a floor. I've done. I've kind of done like installations with material that lie on the floor mm -hmm. that are still folded, but very coarse, very coarse material. I'm always open to different ideas and different things. Um, weirdly, when I was in Hong Kong, um, I did this commission which was printed on this, this tunnel. Um, and Jim Lambie was over as well, and he'd done a, a similar thing, um, which was printed on the floor. It was all part of the same commission, so oh, we were okay. chatting about how he'd done the floor, I'd done the walls. <laughs> so we should do a swap, you know, just like integrate it. Um, but that was, yeah, it's quite interesting. I think the, the kind of scale that I can work to, I mean, I can pretty much adapt to any kind of space, big or small. Yeah. Um, it, the, the only thing is just the logistics, you know, how you get it printed, how you get it made. and Yeah. There's always a way. Have you seen some of those really interesting um, basketball courts that have been done recently? Yeah. So that's amazing. I love stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, so who was that? William Lachance and people, yeah. yeah. Yeah, amazing. So yeah, I mean, there's so much scope for public art now. 
Um, yes, I think you know. I think um, you know communities, councils, and all of them are more open to sort of seeing artwork in what were mm. not so traditional. You know, there was the se separation of things like the sport being in the park, but now and, and the art mm. in the park was whatever a sculpture or a mm. panel or something. But actually now it's you know they're much more open to um, integrating all of that. Mm. Yeah, it's great. Actually, going back to what you were asking about really good spaces to see art, I think one of the best shows I've seen in a long time was Katharina Gross at, yes. at South London Art Gallery. That was really that good. That was amazing. Yeah. I went about five times yeah. to see that. I went a few times. Yeah, just kept having, I kept finding new things and I yeah. really enjoyed it. And it's, it's interesting because it's not a million miles away from the kind of materials I use. It's just a very, very different activation of it, and I kind of, I just loved it. It was great. She's great. She's all over the world now, yeah. isn't she? She's really, um, you know, I think I was in Rome a while ago, and she was, she just had a show there and things. Yeah, mm. she's. I mean, I've seen it a lot that take... she's doing, but I've yet to see anything as good as that. That, <laughs> that was just amazing. She's, she's going to have to really work to top that one. <laughs> it's a very, very good show, and a great space as well. Yeah, the, I mean, how she was able to take over the mm. whole space, that they really sort of, yeah, surrendered that. That was awesome. So I saw that you have got some collaboration brewing with Michael Petrie over at Mocha. Tell me about that. I have. So I was, I was called in, I was summoned for a meeting. Oh, um, I do like Michael. Michael. He's so funny. Yeah, I do as well. And we're doggy people, so we always see each other <laughs> walking our dogs. And um, I went to see him and we, we had a little chat and he... he he asked me if I would like to do a show. They'd never done a show with something painted onto the walls of the gallery. Wow. Um, so, so I'll be the first person to paint the walls of the gallery, which I'll be doing this November. And how long is that going to be up for? Uh, I think it's there till January, I think, because they have quite quite December mm -hmm. period. So I think it's going to be there for quite a while. Oh, that's going to be amazing, because yeah. that is a nice little space, actually. It is. And then what about that bookcase on the wall? Are you going to paint over that, or are they going to get that panelled up for you? I can't tell you, it's secret. Oh, is it? Okay. It's all secret. Oh, I'm excited. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. <laughs> We've kind of, yeah, the plans are in motion. Um, we're going to do it quite a bit before the show, so that we can photograph it for the catalogue and stuff. But it's, yeah, it should be good. And again, it's like the first thing I've done in... South London, other than the uh, the, the show Daily we did at Daily Good, so it's kind of quite nice. It is, God like oh. Dean, and it's like about a five minute walk from my house, <laughs> so the commute will be great. <laughs> <laughs> so your next show is at House of St Barnabas in October, yeah, and then Mocha opening in November on yeah. Bellenden Road in Peckham. And where can people find you online? They can find me at remyruff.com and uh, on Instagram as Remy Ruff, and that's pretty much that's it. That's it, I think. Brilliant. I will take some pictures and put the links in the show notes as well. Thank you, Remy, oh, so much for your time. Welcome, it's been lovely Peter. to chat with you. Likewise. <laughs>